Welcome to another special bonus episode of The Dark Parade. My name is Bo, and I'm a found footage fool. Tell me the camera thing isn't annoying. Yeah, it's annoying. All right. Folks, let's get right to it. Uh, this is, of course, another episode of Found Footage Full. If this is your first time listening to this particular bonus episode of The Dark Parade, um, what it is is me wrestling with the idea that I watch too many found footage movies, most of which are kind of terrible, but I can't stop. Now, I wish I could tell you that, uh, like I said at my intervention, I can stop any time, but this is simply not the case. I end up returning time and again to this subgenre of horror and it doesn't necessarily treat me right but but I have been on a bit of an upswing the last episode we did of course was on uh, a, a movie called My Little Eye and that was pretty good had some really good stuff going for it this is a lesser known well not that My Little Eye is uh is super famous um but this, I think, is even lesser known than that. Uh, it is a movie called Live Scream from 2018. Comes in at a breezy hour and ten minutes. And here's what I like about Live Scream. Is not only is it short, it gets some of the little things right. We'll talk about that once we turn to our list of criteria. But the the basic overview of the movie is that you have uh, this guy named Scott who is a, a live streamer, kind of a Twitch streamer, uh, playing some generally adventure games, horror games, and, you know, chit-chatting with people who hang out in his chat room and trying, one presumes, uh, to get some kind of, uh, you know, fame or fortune or acceptance, and, and that's kind of part of the the story and uh he is given uh, a recommendation to play a game called live scream and in so doing he ends up playing it like it's a series of levels and uh as as he goes along uh members of his you know chat the the people watching him are murdered and so scott you know, is kind of trapped in this situation where he has to finish the game or more of his viewers will be killed. Uh, or, uh, it, you know, one presumes he himself could be killed. So basically he has to go through uh, these nine, uh, nine levels to get to the end. And, uh, you know, it's... Hmm. Let's just get to the tropes, shall we? So... There are five criteria that we judge all of these movies on. We're going to start with keeping the camera on, which is really the the crux of this. Like, you know, he's doing a live stream. It, it is shown much like a Twitch stream. A lot of times it's him uh, full screen. Sometimes it's, you know, him in the corner and you're seeing the game. So it's all done via that, uh, as well as some webcam footage and that kind of thing. So all of it tracks it all makes sense the fact that you are witnessing all of this is absolutely uh reasonable and and reasonably well done so if we're keeping the camera on solid five out of five perfect then you come to characters of which there aren't many actually um because it is mostly this guy scott uh as as played by gunner willis is the actor's name and then you have a few people that you see on webcams and so forth, people from the chat. And most of that is done via text, so it's not like you're dealing with a lot of characters necessarily, but you do have sort of personalities. There are members of the chat room, one of whom is like the moderator uh, for the chat. You get these, you know, sort of like weird relationships with these people that you don't ever really see but you certainly get an idea that oh they're you know they're, they that uh, Scott has a relationship with them to some degree you know like he recognizes some of the names and uh, like I said there is the I think Jumping Wolf is the name of his moderator and uh, who hangs out all the time with with the live streams that Scott does and then you've got um, one kind of jerk. 
I think that's Lemonhead, I want to say, um, is is the dude who jumps in and is kind of trolling uh, Scott Wally's playing this murderous video game. But the thing that's interesting is, like, I don't think the performance is 100% there for Scott, but it's pretty close. And... It, that's that goes a long way with me like it, everybody cared about this movie even though it is is super low budget and all that like people were trying to make a good film out of this and the relationship between him and some of his uh his viewers is really interesting to me because it's something that we you know living in the modern world where you do have all these sort of you know twitch and youtube youtube personalities that you interact with um, especially on the lower end of the spectrum, um, where there aren't a ton of followers. So it's not like a ninja or something like that. That's doing game streaming. And you're just one of, you know, thousands or hundreds of people watching that. It's more, uh, more intimate than that. You know, the movie kind of gets around to the idea of like, why do you do this? Why, why are you presenting yourself to the world in this way? And in this format and why are people watching? And so the characters of in this are reasonably well done. I'm going to give this like a, a solid four out of five. It's a, a kind of an interesting examination um, of the motivations for doing something like this. So then that brings us to authenticity. And here is another place where I think live screen largely does a very good job with this of presenting uh, each level of the game as sort of a, a style of horror video game. There's some, uh, um, some amnesia in that there is some um, alien isolation a little bit like all of it's kind of unity and like you could tell that all of this was done by somebody who just had a unity account and, and cobbled this stuff together uh, like the slender the arrival that kind of game and it, it kind of works though like it looks really cheap and stripped down and if the game looked a little more polished maybe that would be something but if you are into video games, and especially horror video games, you're going to kind of recognize all of the game styles, or at least some of them for sure. There's like a Five Nights at Freddy's kind of vibe to one of them. And this is the point where you realize like, oh, well, you know, when when somebody dies in the game, um, not, you know, they die in real life, but like one of his viewers for every time Scott fails, one of his viewers kind of pays the price for that. And at one point he tells everybody like, get out of this chat, like get out of here. If you're not, you know, and in some cases they're like, I can, I'm trying to leave, but I can't leave this chat room. So anyway, all, all of that I find uh, reasonably good. And, and the authenticity of both Scott as a gamer and in talking sometimes about like, Oh, this is a first person shooter. You guys know that I suck at this that kind of stuff like there's there are things that if you've ever watched someone do a game stream that are are little bits and moments that feel like you're watching a, an honest to goodness twitch stream of someone and i like all of that that really appealed to me so i'm again with the authenticity i'm gonna give it like a four out of five uh i think that it it's not you know, one to one with real life, but there is certainly enough about this that I find really compelling and interesting, and and uh, the veracity of the game that he's playing. It like it it looks like a super cheap indie game that you would find on Steam for three bucks, and th maybe that is enough to make it like, oh well, this is just how it goes. You know, this is the kind of game uh, that a guy like this would be playing. I still think it looks a little too cheap for that, but then again, I've seen some game uh, streams here l lately from the you know bargain bin of of Steam that don't look much better than this. So I I might even be uh, sort of scoring this low on the authenticity front. Um, but anyway, I, I enjoyed that. So then watchability, right? So watchability. Um, for me, it is about, like, can you keep your eyes on the screen? Is it is it dull? Um, and I don't think it is. Like, again, this movie comes in at right around 70 minutes, so it doesn't really overstay its welcome. Even though the premise is very simple of, hey, you've got a guy 
playing video games and the people in his audience may or may not be, you know, getting killed by some malevolent force tied to the game. Um, that could be a little cheap, but also you get these moments where, uh, particularly when he's talking to, I, again, I, I might have this wrong, but I think it's jumping wolf who is the, uh, the, the moderator. There's a, this moment at the end where it's like, a, his moderator is kind of hanging with him and is like, Hey, I'm not going to leave you. And they have a conversation about why he, why Scott streams and why this guy jumping wolf watches. And, uh, you know, the, for Scott, it's like, you know, this was a way for me. I was never good at anything else. I'm not really good at anything. And this was a way for me to kind of forge some kind of relationship and feel like I'm doing something. And Jumping Wolf turns out to be like an older guy who, by his own admission, is just like, my life it didn't work out the way I wanted. I don't I don't really think that uh, I've contributed much to society. I've fought depression. But watching you play these games is really fun and I find a lot of enjoyment and I, I really appreciate it. And it creates this interesting dynamic of like, Oh, this is a guy that's maybe twice the age of Scott. Um, not really a father figure by any stretch, but just this weird relationship that has been forged over the internet where they both get something out of it. And it, I find that to be really interesting. And, and there's some of that, you know, kind of sprinkled throughout the movie. In addition to the fact that I am, you know, just kind of a sucker for here is a video game that can kill you. Like I, there's something about that premise. I really like that hasn't ever been pulled off really well. In fact, this it for, for it being a super indie movie and all of that, this pulls it off about as well as anything I've ever seen, which is to say, you know, it's not great, but it's, it's, it, it's totally serviceable within uh, the story. But I think the thing that is most interesting about the story is this relationship that he has with the people watching uh, him, him stream. And that's the stuff that I think the movie gets most right. And it makes it compelling. Like I, I have a lot of sympathy for Scott as a character. You, you start to uh, sort of feel for even the people watching, even though that much like Scott, you really don't get a face uh, to put with the names, really, you just kind of have these text-based sorts of relationships with them, and I think that's really interesting. Like, I think that's well done, um, and I would probably be remiss if I did not at least call out the director and writer of this, uh, Michelle Ianan Ianantono, Ian Ianantono, something like that. I apologize for. Uh, missing the last name but uh anyway well done michelle and she's gone on to do um you know some more shorts and that kind of thing that also did a movie called detroit evolution which i haven't seen but more more exciting to me is that there is a movie called live screamers which i assume is a sequel to live scream uh that is going to be uh in in pre-production currently and i hope that it happens. I, I really would love to uh, to see a sequel to this movie. Uh, at any rate, back to our five criteria. And watchability, I'm going to give it like another four out of five. I, th I thought it was uh, immensely watchable. Um, scares is really where it kind of falls down. I don't know that the movie is intensely scary. Um, it, it It's serviceable in that, uh, in, in that front. Um, there are some moments of, especially the Five Nights at Freddy stuff, it's like, oh, well, this is just rife with jump scares. I don't know that there's this kind of creeping dread that I would sort of like to see in this movie uh, when it comes to what Live Scream is and who's behind it and that sort of thing. Maybe that's something we'll get in the uh, potential sequel, fingers crossed. Um, so I don't think it's terribly scary, but it also it it is more about the characters and the situation than it is just outright trying to scare you and where you know scott as a character ends up i think is, is sort of you know kind of heartbreaking in in some ways there's a bit of a watch the skies kind of vibe to it but um yeah i i don't know that it's terribly frightening but 
I kind of don't care. Um, and I'm going to tell you right now, like overall, I'm going to score this movie about a four out of five. Um, I, I don't think it's perfect. I think some of the budget limitations uh, don't do it well or don't do well by it. But it's still a really interesting take on the idea of, you know, here is a video game that if you play it, bad things could happen to you or others. Uh, and mostly because, uh, you know, this goes back to the writing that the the character of Scott and the relationship that he forges with the people that he is streaming for um, is explored with a, a fairly deft eye and, and a bit of nuance. And it's just more interesting than a lot of the stuff that you see based around this concept. So uh, if you have not seen live scream, I really can't recommend it enough. If you're a found footage fan, and even if you're not a found footage fan, um, I would say that you ought to check this out if you get the opportunity because it's genuinely um, like I've seen the movie a couple of times at this point and I, I still like it. I, there is something about it that I keep returning to and better yet. It's uh it's streaming on uh, Amazon for like two bucks. So, you know, it, again, you got two bucks burning a hole in your pocket uh, you are buy it for seven bucks. I don't, I don't know that that's a terrible idea. So, uh, I should probably do that given the number of times I've rented this over, over the years. Um, at any rate, that is probably going to do it for this episode of found footage fool. We got a good one this time folks with, uh, with live scream. Uh, I hope, I hope that the sequel actually does happen because I would be very, very interested to see, uh, what this writer and director does with, uh, you know, kind of extending the premise of this and maybe gets a little more lore heavy. Uh, who knows? Who knows? Like, I don't want to, I don't want to step on her toes. She, she did a good movie. I'm not going to try to tell her how to, how to make her sequel. Just make it. And I want to see it. All right. That's it for uh found footage fool. Uh, we are going to be, uh, just chock full of stuff next week. You're going to have a uh, sinister Sunday come Sunday night uh, over on youtube.com forward slash Legion podcast at 5 p.m. Central time. Uh, from there, the audio version of that will drop on Monday, uh, known as Morbid Mondays on uh, on that Monday morning. Also, you're going to get new episodes on uh, Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. You're going to have a heart of horror next week. It If you are a Dark Parade fan, next week is the week that you've been waiting for. It is going to be chock full of, uh, of fun stuff. So, uh, thanks for listening as always. Thanks for rating and reviewing. Thanks for sharing the show around all of that stuff. Uh, and thank you as ever for joining the dark parade. We'll see you soon.